Hey, what's going on people? So I am now currently in LAX at the Tom Bradley International Airport. I'm flying over to Tokyo, I'm gonna be there for a week. Should be an awesome time, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a comparison of flying in economy with Japan Airlines, and then on the way back home, I'm gonna be flying in first class. So right now I'm gonna head over to the gate to do the economy flight over to Tokyo. I'm at gate 155, should be arriving just on time right before boarding. I'm not group one, I am group five, so it doesn't matter really. There's gonna be four groups ahead of me. This is actually gonna be my first time flying on Japan Airlines. I've actually heard that it has the best economy, international flight option out there. So it's gonna be interesting to see exactly what they have to offer. But yeah, looking forward to it for sure. So obviously with an economy ticket, you're not gonna be getting any type of business class or first class lounges you can go to before uh, at the airport. But if you haven't had the American Express Platinum card and you are flying out of LAX, you can use the Centurion Lounge, which is what I did. Um, but when it comes to LAX and Priority Pass, there's not a lot of great options here. I will say that. So definitely it's better to have something like the American Express Platinum card if you wanna be flying internationally at LAX. Here's my plane, the 777-300. I'm in the back of the line. As you can see, there's only about 10 people behind me, so it took a little bit of time to get on the plane, but when I got on, here's my seat. As you can see, there's a nice adjustment to the headrest, which I feel like is very necessary for when you are trying to get yourself some nice sleep on the plane. There's a little back pad right here for the lower back, which is nice. And also they have a blanket for sleeping uh, as this is an overnight flight. I'm someone who always tries to choose a window seat because I like to look outside the airplane, but also I like to lean against the airplane. Now here is the different magazines that are going to be in the seat in front of me. There's actually quite a number of things in here. I've never seen so many different magazines, but if that's something that entertains you, then you have that as an option. Now here's the headphones that actually come with the flight. Now I think these are actually better than most of the ones they tend to give you because it's already going to end up being over the ear. Now I do actually have my own Bose headphones with me and I'm not someone who likes little earbuds but um, I didn't end up using these because I have the noise cadence station ones. However, if I didn't happen to have mine with me, I think these actually would have been a fine option to be able to listen to different movies that are off. Here is going to be the remote for the TV. It was incredibly responsive and the options for the films, at least in my opinion, were actually pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of foreign Japanese films and there was an okay amount of the US uh, films. I am someone who actually really likes foreign films, so I was okay with that. This moment I realized that the doors have shut. No one was sitting next to me, which means I got what is considered the poor man's business class. I gave my seatmate a high five and ended up being incredibly happy to have all this additional space. Now, my seatmate was actually an 82 year old grandma and she was an absolute sweetheart. And unfortunately she was traveling for sad reasons. Her younger sister had just passed away over in Osaka. But even though she was traveling for these terrible situation, she actually was in great spirits. She was incredibly nice and generous. And she was showing me photos of her children and her grandchildren and she kept on giving me compliments and snacks. She was my grandmother for the travels and I was very thankful to be sitting next to her. She was an awesome person to be conversing with during this trip. Now the plane was not full, which actually surprised me considering how many people are now traveling to Tokyo since it's opened up. So one downside about using my own headphones is that it only has the single piece to actually go into the headphone jack whereas the headphones that they actually do provide have this little dual piece. So if you actually end up using their headphones, you can actually listen to it the correct way it's supposed to be. Now, if you actually end up pulling it out just slightly on the headphone jack, you can get it to work for both ears, but it's just not the exact audio you're supposed to get, but it was good enough for me. Now, here's the snack that they gave after takeoff. I got myself a glass of red wine. Look at the little bottle that comes in. I am a big fan of personal bottles, and this red wine was actually really good and I like to drink it to help me fall asleep on a plane um, but yeah it was definitely a tasty red wine and this snack right here is a Japanese snack it tasted kind of like cereal but um, as a whole it was 
Okay. Now, when pouring this glass of wine, I remember reflecting on thinking about how grateful and fortunate I am to be able to take this trip. Many people don't even get to travel. Some people are only traveling for business, and then others may only travel for unfortunate reasons. But for me, I'm able to travel for leisure, have a great time in a new city, and I just feel incredibly blessed to be able to do this. Now here is my dinner, and I must say that the presentation they actually have here is really good for economy. Here is the soup I actually have in my cup. There's going to be some greens, as you can see, the salad I have, along with a the beef option is what I chose. Now I'm gonna uncover this in just a second, and I will say that this is a decent amount of food for my economy flight. I remember the last time I flew international in economy was with United and I feel like I barely had enough food and it didn't taste very good. But right here, there is a decent portion of food and I love being able to get the bottle of water. As I said earlier, I am a big fan of just having my own personal bottle. And they also actually give you real china. I mean, look, it's actual metal uh, knives and forks and a spoon. I actually dropped the knife on my phone and cracked the screen protector. So it's definitely strong and well-made. And um, also give you some dessert right here, a little bit of ice cream that you end up getting. And I also got myself another glass of wine. So yeah, this is gonna end up being my meal for dinner. And I will say that this was the best economy meal I've ever had by far. It was so good. The beef is really, really good. I don't know if I was just starving or what it was, but I just loved this meal. I can't even think of another economy meal that I've had that even comes close to this. This thing was by far the best economy meal I've ever had on a plane. Now, I also was able to taste the chicken because my seatmate grandma actually gave me hers saying that I should eat it because I'm a big, strong man. So she put it on my plate and I didn't want to refuse the food that she was giving me. I will say that the beef was definitely a lot better to me, so if you could choose, I would choose the beef. I turned on the film Roroni Kenshin, the fourth chapter, which is actually based off an anime that I used to watch when I was younger, so it was pretty cool to see this as a live action movie. But the cool thing about this bathroom is that they do actually offer the Japanese style toilets. So if you actually like the bidet, then you can actually use this in the economy flight, which is actually pretty cool. So after taking a nap, I woke up and here was my breakfast. Now my breakfast was eggs with some rice. Um, here's the presentation. I'll take it off so you can actually end up seeing it. And I will say that the dinner was a lot better to me. I thought this breakfast was just fine. Um, but I will say that the fruit that came along with it was also fresh, uh, just like the fruit that was actually offered for dinner. And then also came with some orange juice that I got along with some yogurt. So after finishing my meal, we began to descend. Now, if I had to rank this international economy flight, I would give this a 10 out of 10 when it comes to economy flights. I absolutely loved the food, the service, and I was very fortunate to have someone sitting directly beside me. But the person who actually was sitting next to me, the Japanese grandma, was an absolute sweetheart. She really did help my travel experience hearing her story and just really let me feel very grateful to be able to travel to such an awesome city. And she truly was a great representation of what my experience was gonna end up being in Japan, which was that the people there are incredibly kind and generous. I started off my journey at the Hyatt Regency. I absolutely love these chandeliers. And if you happen to be someone who likes to stay at Hyatt, only 15,000 points to stay at this hotel. And after that, I switched over to the Park Hyatt Tokyo. Now, this hotel is the one that actually was featured in the movie Lost in Translation. This is the best hotel that I've ever stayed at in my entire life. I absolutely loved it. I mean, look at this view of Tokyo. I was on the 44th floor, which I'm told that 44 is actually an unlucky number in Japanese culture. But if this is what unlucky is, I'm happy to be it. What's going on, people? I'm at Haneda Airport, ready to take off to go back to Los Angeles. Just finished up my week in Tokyo. 
I'm sad to be leaving, but it was absolutely awesome. Definitely a top destination to visit if you haven't visited it. Now, on the way home, I'm gonna be flying in first class. So since I am in first class, and have my first class boarding pass ticket right here, I actually get to go visit Japan Airlines first class lounge. So let's go check that out. I said, this airport has a lot of fancy stores right inside of it. As soon as you walk in, you end up seeing Gucci, you end up seeing Rolex. There's a lot of options for things. If you want to head back to your country, you get to see cool things. You can actually end up taking back high-end things. So I'm actually at where the airport lounge would be. It's actually pretty quick. As soon as you get through security, you just walk, I don't know, 50 yards, and it's over on the left. So let's go check it out. Now, the thing about flying first class as compared to flying economy is that they want you to have an incredible experience, not just in the airplane, but before you even take off. So this is gonna be the first class lounge at Haneda Airport. This thing was really beautiful. Definitely classic Japanese style look as you walk in. There's gonna be a ton of seat options. Now here there's gonna be different chefs who are actually preparing your food for you. So you actually get to see the different sushi and ramen that's actually gonna be made. This lounge is really, really cool. There's gonna be so many drink options here, whether it be whiskey, vodka, if you want a different wine, champagne. There's also a machine that actually pours a beer for you, which is really cool. So first impressions, this lounge is actually really nice. One, it's pretty darn big. There's a ton of chairs all around and there isn't that many people here. This one has just so much available space. Maybe it's just the time that I'm coming here, but um, yeah, it's just a lot of space to be able to sit. So just like all airport lounges, you're gonna be able to get yourself some free food and free drinks. Um, here, there's actually a QR code that you end up scanning and what you do is you actually end up ordering it and it looks like sushi is on the menu that you end up getting here in Japan obviously so uh, I'm gonna scan it and get myself some sushi. So here's where you would order as you go see on here you can actually um, schedule for a shower so if you need to shower up right before your flight got that option. So here's my first round of orders here see it's actually pretty cool getting the sushi to come out. So just finished up that sushi and ramen, a good lunch to have before getting on the plane. I now have about an hour before my departure, so what I'm gonna do is just relax, sip on a little bit of champagne. I'm not gonna have too much of it because JL actually has some of the best champagne out there you can get in their first class flights, so I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm just gonna have a glass here before I end up getting into the first class flight. So after finishing up at the first class lounge, I headed over to my and since I am flying first class, this means that I get to be with group one, which is going to end up being the first group to board the plane. And the cool thing about when you actually get down to the plane, you take the left plane versus the right, which allows you to enter the plane from the front. So this gives you another added level of privacy if you happen to either be a celebrity or you just don't happen to want to mingle with other people on the plane. So this is my seat for the next 11 hours. It is absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at how much space this seat has as compared to the economy class seat that I flew in on.
All right, so we haven't taken off yet. We're just currently now boarding all the other groups. I was the first group in, being in first class. And while sitting here for the three minutes I've been here, I've already had three different flight attendants actually just come by me and introduce themselves and be incredibly sweet. And just let me know that if I need anything, I'd be able to accommodate. So yeah, this is so far been a pretty good experience. I haven't even taken off yet. One thing I always like to compare when flying at the front of the plane is how much leg room I end up getting. I'm someone who's 5'10 and look at me try to fully stretch out and see how much space I end up getting. I mean the best way I can describe this seat is think of the best man cave recliner couch you've ever sat on. That's how comfortable this thing is. Now there's a nice little light over there on the right and left and then also a headphone jack, nice bottle of water, an amenity kit that we'll look at a little bit later and then look how big this screen is as compared to the one that was on the back of the seat flying over. I'm fully stretching out over here and yet I can barely get my feet over there. So if you're someone who's really tall, you're definitely going to have an enormous amount of space here. Now the table actually adjusts, you get to pull it close to you, which is really, really cool. And this table is massive. I mean, there's just so much space. If you're someone who wants to get work done or if you just want it set up for your meal, there's definitely going to be an enormous amount of space here. Now here's my flight attendant bringing me my pre-departure drink. I decided to get myself a glass of champagne. This isn't a high level champagne yet. You're not allowed to get that until after takeoff. Now here is the bed menu offered on Japan Airlines First Class. They have both the options of either a Western style meal or a Japanese style meal. I decided to go with the Japanese style meal since I'm flying on Japan Airlines. Now on the left side of the seat, you're gonna see the ability to recline your chair. There's also gonna be this little compartment that has the remote for your TV. I will say this remote wasn't overly responsive so that was one thing that I noted um, but there's also going to be all this extra space for places if you want to have your purse to sit in or just whatever little items you may actually end up having there's just a lot of added extra space you end up getting. Now when it comes to the windows you get one two three windows as compared to the only one window I had when flying over in economy. And also you get yourself a thing of pajamas that you get to put on for when you're ready to go to sleep. The Japanese people are so nice, they literally wave to the airplane as we take off. Now here is my first class snack. If you remember when flying over an economy, I had those little like cereal style things that tasted fine. But as you can see right here, this is something that you would pretty much imagine getting in like a restaurant. Now this is gonna end up being the famous Salon Champagne. This bottle costs over a thousand dollars. Now I've never had anything remotely this close to when it comes to high quality champagne or alcohol before. So this ends up being really cool to be able to get this on call with this flight. Now while I did really enjoy my economy flight, you can just see the levels of difference when it comes to the luxury for my economy snack versus my first class one. thousand dollar bottle of champagne. Now I'm someone who this is pretty much being wasted on because I do not have a palate to be able to tell the difference between a thousand dollar bottle or a ten dollar bottle. To me, while it does actually have a unique taste, I will say that as a whole, it mainly just tastes like champagne to me. But it is cool to be able to drink this unique champagne because I don't know another time where I'm actually going to have a bottle of snow champagne. This is going to end up being the first course of my meal. There are many different things here. I'd be lying to you if I could say that I remembered what all these things were. I do remember that four of them were really, really, really good. One of them, the fourth one on the right, actually ended up being a little bit more chewy and I wasn't as big of a fan of that. But as a whole, this thing was very, very good. And my flight tank came back over with another glass of Salon Champagne for me. I ended up actually having three glasses of which is pretty awesome. Now while I was in Tokyo, I'm still someone who prefers a fork, so I decided to use that for my meal. Now a great thing about this flight is that they actually give you free Wi-Fi, and a hilarious thing is that in many business class flights, they actually don't give you that. So some people are paying four to $5,000 for a flight, but they don't even get it themselves free Wi-Fi, which to me is absolutely insane. 
Now, here's the second part of the meal. It's going to be some soup. I thought the soup right here was fine. I think this is actually tofu, so I wasn't as into it. Now, the next part of the meal ended up being caviar on the right and ended up being crab on the left. And I thought this was really, really good. The caviar is something that I wasn't super into, but the crab was fantastic. Having crab caviar along with Salone champagne, this is what I felt like true luxury actually was. And for the main course of the meal, I got beef along with rice, Japanese pickle, and also some more soup. I do think that this was really, really good. I mean, it tastes like something you get in a restaurant, which is pretty incredible to actually be able to get that done on a plane. But as a whole, this entire meal, the presentation is just all done so well. And I really, really enjoyed this entire meal experience. Now, after the main meal came out my dessert, and I thought that this thing was incredible. If I could find this in America, I definitely would eat this very often because I thought this was sweet, but not too sweet. It was just perfect. Now, I'm going to actually let the flight attendant explain to you exactly what it is. This is um, a She told me to have green tea with it because she told me that's the best mix, so that's what I did, and it did go together very well. Alright, now let's look at some of the things you end up getting in first class. You actually end up getting these noise canceling headphones. You don't get to keep them, you do have to return them, but I will say that these things were made incredibly well. Definitely to the level of my bows, if not better. Really good noise cancellation, incredibly comfortable around my ears and on my head. And when actually watching a film, these headphones were perfect. I only used my own headphones when I was using the internet for my phone, since so my phone doesn't have a headphone jack. But as a whole, I think these ended up being the most comfortable headphones I've ever actually put over my ear and on my head. And then definitely really good noise cancellation and quality when it comes to the audio. Now let's take a quick look at the amenity kit. You also get slippers, which are actually really comfortable, ones that I've kept and are still using at home. Now let's take a look at the bathroom. So when it comes to the size of the bathroom, it's pretty much the same size as the economy. They do actually have some of these like metal poles to grab onto when in the bathroom. Um, as a whole, still clean, looks very similar to the economy bathroom. You also get the same type of style toilet when it comes to having the bidet. So if that's something that you're interested in, you will actually have the option in first class as well. And here are my pajamas that I'm going to be trying on. So here's what they look like on me. Now I weigh about 175 pounds, I'm 5'10". I got the medium size, it fit perfect. These things are really, really comfortable. I still actually have these in my apartment and I have been wearing them ever since this flight. And I don't actually have any pajamas before this, so this was definitely really nice to be able to have. And I think that they're great quality. Definitely recommend putting these on if you're gonna take a nap on the plane. Now when it comes to things that are offered in the bathroom, such as like perfume and also toothbrushes, there are actually gonna be way more options in first class as compared to what there was in economy. Heading back to my seat, they had my bed made up and this is what it looks like. So this ended up being incredibly comfortable. The thing that I love about first class ends up just being how much space you get. 
I mean, you can see my hat over there along with my Bose headphones and all the different things that I came in with. I'm gonna be able to have that over on the left side of me, but also being able to have a bed. This is the luxury you end up getting when you actually end up flying in first class. This bed was very, very comfortable and I slept really, really well. In fact, maybe too well because when I woke up, it was already time to eat. So here is my breakfast that I just took a picture of because maybe so much of the Salone champagne that I actually ended up having, but I actually did get myself some great sleep. And then after the breakfast, they actually end up giving you this nice thing of chocolate. But as a whole, I absolutely love this experience. You definitely feel a different level of luxury flying in first class as compared to business class. Now you don't have to be rich to fly this way. I was able to get this first class seat that usually costs $12,000 for only 59 bucks using credit card points and miles. If you want to learn how to fly like me in the front of the plane with a bottle of champagne, check out more videos on my channel and you can learn the different tricks and tips that I have for credit card points and miles.